this video is the second video of a two-part series on xylem. The first part covered what xylem was, the different transport cell types, and different terms that are associated with xylem. As a quick review, there are two main types of transporting tissues in the xylem. They are tracheids and vessel elements. Tracheids are found in both angiosperms and gymnosperms, but vessel elements, which are shorter and squatter, are found only in angiosperms. We're going to talk about angiosperms and vessel arrangement now. Angiosperms can also be described based on where their vessels are located in each annual ring. If you're a woodworker, you may have run into these terms before. Ring porous and diffuse porous. When a tree starts growing in the season, it needs a lot more water and resources. So the cells tend to be bigger, there's more cells, and you get what looks like a wider band of wood. Towards the end of the season, the growth slows, the cells get smaller and tighter, and that's the late wood. And it's the contrast between the early wood and the late wood that gives you the appearance of annual rings. If the vessels are in the spring wood, the species is said to be ring porous. The more famous examples of ring porous trees is oak, but also includes ash, black locust, catalpa, and so on. If the vessels are not concentrated and they're just dispersed, they're called diffuse porous. Species include alders, birches, buckeye, maple, tilia, willow, poplars. Remember, these terms only apply to angiosperms or hardwoods because they have those vessels. Gymnosperms or softwoods do not have vessels, and so their wood generally looks more uniform. Plants also have non-conducting cells that support the conducting cells. The two types that are covered in the study guide is parenchyma and fibers. Parenchyma cells are large cells. They have thin cell walls, but they have a large vacuole in the middle. So they're very useful for storage. Unlike the tracheids and the vessels, they're alive at maturity. And this means that they can support other cells. They can move things around and they'll have different shapes depending on what their purpose is. You may have heard of rays in wood, which bisect the annual rings. They're made of ray parenchyma and you can see them with the naked eye. They store starches and other substances that the tree may need later. And because they cross the annual rings, they're able to move them between each year of growth. As sapwood is converted to heartwood, the ray parenchyma die. And so the interior is functionally completely dead. The other cell type is fibers. They're long and slender, usually occurring in strands or bundles. Basically, anything that you would think of as a fiber, like flax or hemp, in a casual sense, is also a fiber in the botanical sense. There are some fibers that are also found in the phloem. In addition to transporting substances and water and storing materials, xylem also supports a tree and aids in the defense process. The cell walls of xylem are primarily made up of lignin and cellulose, the basic building materials of these cells. Together, they make up up to 85% of the dry mass of a woody plant. This will come up again in discussions about wood decay because certain decay fungi can only break down lignin or cellulose. Xylem can also play a role in defense. In certain conifers, there are resin ducts embedded in their xylem. When they experience stress, like from drought or insect attack, the ducts will release substances to plug up the xylem and prevent the intruder from spreading throughout the rest of the tree. The parenchyma cells are very important in these processes because they're the live cells within the xylem and they're able to trigger these changes. As arborists, it's really important to understand xylem because it comes up in wood strength, wood decay, growth, and so on. 